Hi, I am a volunteer with the Lake County Master Gardeners, and I'm with the um, Public Speakers Bureau, and this topic is gardening for the birds. It's a PowerPoint presentation. When I finish with all the slides, we'll open it up for all kinds of questions. Without further ado, here we go. Oh, now my slides are stuck. Come on, now that's not going to work. What happened here? It was working a minute ago. There we go. Attracting birds involves more than putting out a bird bath or a feeder. Bird feeders are fine, but they benefit specific species and only when they're kept full. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I am filling my bird feeders every day right now because we have a lot of birds that are using it. Birds require specific habitats. They like open meadows. They also need shrubby areas and forests. Habitat loss is the greatest threat to our land birds. For example, forests that are divided by highways or power lines allow predators like the grackles and the jays access to the eggs and chicks of forest interior birds. Creating a bird habitat in your own yard will help and will be especially helpful if your neighbors follow your lead. Birds and plants have evolved side by side. Birds eat the fruit and nectar, pollinating the plants and dispersing seed. As the seeds pass through the bird's digestive tract, they remain intact and the seed coat is scarified, which means it's scratched. And that's improving the chances of germination. Um, for those of you who are gardeners, you'll know a lot of the seeds before you sow them, you actually have to scratch them so that they can get out of the shell a little bit more easily. Uh, bird excrement is also high in natural fertilizer, which is nitrogen. Plants have evolved in ways that assure the appeal of their fruits to birds. Most trees and shrubs have small fruit, no more than three-fifths of an inch in diameter, just the size of a bird's gaping bill. Many fruits ripen when bird migration hits its peak or when the young are just searching for their first meals. The majority of plants that depend on birds to distribute their seeds produce very brightly colored fruits. Uh, this is an example of the serviceberry fruit that comes from the serviceberry bush. Plants usually put on their fruit display at the same time they are producing sugars or fatty lipids. Those are nutrients that serve no purpose for the plant, but they do attract flocks of seed dispersing birds. And here's a variety of different ones grasping the um, seeds that you see. Brightly colored fruit is a magnet for fruit eating birds such as thrushes and catbirds. Plants ripen in different seasons. Now we're gonna talk about some spring and summer plants. Sweet fruits such as service berries, wild cherries, mulberries, and strawberries. The timing of the fruit for fall. Migrants such as thrushes, tanagers, warblers require fatty fruits to fuel their migration. A few favorite, favorites include spice bush, magnolia, and flowering dogwood. This is a picture of a scarlet tanager. The timing of fruit for winter. Fruits of mountain ash, hawthorn, and viburnum have a low lipid content making them less desirable to the fall migrants, but also they are less likely to turn rancid and rot on the plants. These fruits are especially important when late snowfalls prevent returning migrants from finding insects or worms. Um, I remember one year I had a lot of um, berries out in my planters on stems and they were just very fun. And I watched a robin come over and systematically clean every single berry off in the space of one day. She was really enjoying the fruits of her labors. Natives. Plant natives and avoid the invasive plants. Native plants are more likely to provide a mix of food of the right size and nutrition and at the right time of year. Now we'll talk about 12 ways to design a bird friendly garden. Recreate layers of plant growth. Canopy trees in the forest create an understory for smaller trees and shrubs, such as spice bush. Vines like Virginia creeper provide cover and food. Select plants with fruits that ripen at different times. In the spring, the parents get their energy from foods like the blackberries and the wild cherries. 
In the fall, as we talked about earlier, the migrants require the fatty fruits such as flowering dogwood and spice bush to fuel up their bodies to make the long migration out. And in the winter, the birds that hang around here need the persistent fruits such as the conifers, the hawthorns, the crab apples, and the sumacs. Plant small trees and shrubs in clumps. Uh, clumps provide highly visible mass displays of fruits. Go for a natural look, avoid rows, and plant odd numbers and rounded patches. Um, this not only goes for trees, but it goes for when you're planting your garden, uh, your flowers out there. Same thing with the butterflies. I have a program that we talk about that there as well. Um, butterflies have a hard time finding a single flower in a batch, but if you plant a big swath of something, they'll see it more readily. The same thing with the small trees that you're seeing here. If you have a single specimen, it may be very pretty, but it, they're not going to find it as readily as if you plant several together, which causes them to zero into your yard. Plant at least one clump of conifers. The conifers will provide shelter during storms and the winter weather. You can also provide roosting and nesting sites for them. Spare a dead tree. Uh, birds like to perch in dead trees. Woodpeckers will use them for nesting and for drumming. So rather than taking out all the dead trees or maybe even removing a dead limb on a tree that you already have, you might wanna consider leaving it if it's not going to be a danger um, where it might fall on someone or injure someone. Plant vines. Virginia creeper and wild grape provide perches, nesting places, and insects for birds. Now you might wanna limit your lawn size. Lawns provide foraging space for the robins, but they limit the food sources for other birds. So if you can remove some of your yard and plant some bigger planting areas, like here you can see the cone flowers in the forefront and then the other plants underneath it, um, not only will it be prettier, but you will attract a bigger variety of butterflies and other insects that the birds need to eat or to populate and help spread things around as well. So we're not just talking birds. This is good for our vegetation for all of our different wildlife. Avoid invasive non-native species. Invasive species can invade natural areas and crowd out native plants. This is an example of Japanese honeysuckle. Um, another plant that's become very invasive and a lot of you may not be aware of it is pokeweed. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but pokeweed can get to be about eight feet tall. It has these beautiful purple berries on it in the fall. Um, when we had one or two that came up in the adjacent empty lot that had not been developed by us, I thought at first, oh, they're really pretty. They spread by runners, they get very big. They are, the stalks get to be a purplish stalk that I can't pull out of the ground once it gets past about knee high. Uh, like I said, they get up to about eight feet tall. The entire half acre lot next to us became totally engulfed in pokeweed. So that's an example of where it can be such a problem. It came in and it crowded out everything else that was in there. Um, just because of a lone plant. And then the problem is the birds ate those pokeweed uh, berries and they spread them all over the neighborhood. So my entire neighborhood, we've been battling pokeweed for a number of years now. Uh, water sources. Birds need water to drink and to cool themselves. Clean bird baths often and you can also provide a mister for them. This time of the year, it's very helpful to have a heater in your bird bath. Uh, the reason the birds, and that's an example of it down here in the lower left corner, uh, the birds need to get in and take a bath because it allows them to fluff their feathers, which allows them to stay warmer. So they need to have that water source to not only drink, but to stay warm. Provide nest boxes. In all, 48 species are known to use nest boxes. The size of the box and the size of the entrance hole are important. You wanna look for a sloping roof, drainage holes, and an access door for annual cleaning and a predator guard to keep raccoons and squirrels out. Uh, this is a very simple style that's here. You can buy kits for these at your um, local craft store, whatever. I remember when I was a den mother, I actually went out and bought enough kits that each of the boys in my um, Cub Scout troop was able to make one and take them home. And uh, they were pretty simple to assemble because we were able to put it together with a lot of uh, second grade boys. <laughs> Leave some leaf litter. For example, break leaves five or six inches thick and leave under the hedges or the trees. By spring, they will have decomposed and will attract earthworms and insects, which the birds will then eat. Use pesticides sparingly. Pesticides will kill the insects needed by the birds and may harm the birds. 
Now here are some good plants for our Midwest. Service berry. The fruits are eaten by more than 30 species of birds. The white flowers bloom in spring and fruits ripen in early summer. These will grow in shade to full sun. Hackberry. It's a good yard tree that provides late season fruit for many birds such as well as nesting sites. Um, it's adapted to a wide range of soils and it has winter, winter persistent fruits. Rough leaved dogwood. It's a thicket forming shrub or a small spreading tree. It has small yellowish flowers that turn into white berry like fruit. Uh, more than 40 species of birds eat the fruit, including the cardinals, the robins, the bluebirds, and catbirds. Cone flower. Um, also, a lot of people call it echinacea, which is the correct name for it. Uh, drought resistant, it grows very well in the summer. The seeds are attractive to the goldfinches and the pine siskins. Gay feather, also known very much as liatris to a lot of people. These are hardy in zones three to eight. Um, if you're not familiar with the zone we are in, we are in zone five. When we talk about hardiness zones, it starts higher, um, the higher you are in our country up north, the lower your number is. We are in zone five. If you go down to southern Indiana, you can be in lower, lower five and even zone six, going on down to zone eight. When you get to a certain temperature, a lot of plants will die off. Um, so if it says it's hardy through zone five and you plant a plant, you should be okay, even if you get a short temperature drip, dip. Uh, right now this year, we're actually very lucky that we have this um, snow cover that we have because that's helping keep things a little bit warmer at the ground than if it was just wide open and then had all the cold that we're having. Eastern red cedar, uh, Juniperus, and it provides nest sites, fruit, insects, and winter cover. Lots of species are available. Uh, Berry-like fruits are at first whitish, then they turn blue, uh, eaten by over 30 species, including the bluebird, the cedar waxwing, and the robin. Bur oak, uh, birds use it for cover, nest sites, acorns, and insects. This will tolerate a wide range of soil and moisture conditions, but it does tend to prefer deep, moist, well-drained soil. Uh, nearly 100 wildlife species use this tree. Chin Chinkapink oak. It is a medium-sized tree that tolerates dry conditions. Smooth, smooth, smooth sumac. Many birds seek out sumac thickets for the nest sites and cover and consume their fruits in the winter. Now some favorite backyard birds. You probably all recognize this as a black-capped chickadee. Uh, the Northern Cardinal. Its habitat is sheltered backyards, woodland edges. Its diet is seeds and insects. Uh, feeder favorites, it's sunflower seeds and cracked corn. Um, I have cardinals in my backyard daily, several at a time. Usually they are ground feeders. I rarely see them fly up to my feeder. They usually pick up all the seeds that land underneath the feeder. The blue jays, we often call them the yard bosses because they're kind of big and bossy and sometimes chase the others out a little bit. I do have a number of blue jays in my backyard regularly. Uh, their habitat is backyards, parks, and woodlands. Uh, their diet, they're omnivorous. That means including nuts, seeds, fruits, insects, and frogs. Uh, favorites are suet, sunflower seeds, and peanuts. The white-breasted nuthatch. Uh, its habitat is an area with plentiful trees. Its diet are insects and larvae, pine, fir, and maple seeds, juniper berries, oak, beech, and hickory nuts. Uh, the feeder favorites, if you're putting them in, are sunflower seeds, unsalted peanuts, bird seed mix, and suet. The downy woodpecker. Uh, we have lots of downy woodpeckers that come into our yard daily. They really love the um, variety that we keep in our feeders. Uh, open, their habitat is open wooded area, including parks and backyards. Their diet is insects, caterpillars, berries, and nuts. And they really like suet and peanut butter, but I've been using a um, mixed seed that they seem to be eating a lot of. As it has the black oiled sunflowers in, and I have actually gotten the ones that are already shelled because then I don't have so many mountains of shells underneath my seed feeder when I'm finished in the spring, because I used to shovel out garbage cans full at the end of the season. Uh, the American Robin. 
uh, habitat is yards, fields, farms, and woods. Its diet is earthworms, also eats insects, berries, and seeds. The feeder favorites are fresh fruit, raisins, hulled sunflower seeds, which is what I was talking about earlier, and peanut butter. And then I have been noticing on Facebook, a lot of people were posting, why am I seeing robins now? I thought they only came in the spring. I thought they were a migratory bird, etc. And they are not necessarily a migratory bird. So I looked up something this morning and I thought I would read it to you. You might find it of interest. It says, as with men, and this is from um, All About Birds. As with many birds, the wintering range of American robins is affected by weather and natural food supply. But as long as food is available, these birds are able to do well for themselves by staying up north. One reason why they seem to disappear every winter is that their behavior changes. In winter, robins form nomadic flocks, which can consist of hundreds to thousands of birds. Usually these flocks appear where there are plentiful fruits on trees and shrubs, such as your crab apples, hawthorns, holly, juniper, and others. When spring rolls around, these flocks split up. Suddenly we start seeing American robins yanking worms out of our yards again. And it's easy to assume that they've, in quotation marks, returned from migration. But what we're seeing is the switch from being non-territorial in wintertime to aggressively defending a territory in advance of courting and raising chicks. This behavioral switch is quite common in birds. So I thought maybe that would be helpful to some of the people who were posting all the questions about it on Facebook. An oriole, the habitat, it's deciduous woodlands, parks, and the suburbs. Uh, their diet is mostly insects and berries. Feeder favorites are sugar water, halved oranges, nailed to posts, and grape jelly. Um, where we live, um, I don't have Orioles all summer long. I get them for a very brief time as they come through in the spring and then when they travel back through in the fall. Uh, we go to visit some friends of ours up in northern Michigan and they have a huge flock of Orioles that come to their feeders all day every day. And so it kind of depends on where you live as to how you're going to get them. The black-capped chickadee, which we saw earlier, it's wooded suburbs and open woodlands. The diet is insects, berries, and seeds. And the feeder favorites are sunflower seeds, suet, and thistle. The cedar waxwing. Habitats are backyards, parks, and open woodlands. The diet is fruit, tree sap, flower petals, and insects. And the backyard favorites that they like are berry producing trees and shrubs like the firethorn, the high bush cranberry, and the mulberry. And if you notice, those are very different bushes and things than we have been mentioning in the past. Uh, the Eastern Bluebird. Habitat is open backyards and farmland. The diet is insects and berries, and the feeder favorites are live mealworms. The American Goldfinch. It habitat is open areas like yards, fields, fence rows. The diets are seeds and berries, and the feeder favorites are thistle seed, whether they're on your um, uh, echinacea cone flowers and pulling the thistles out that way, or you can actually put the thistle seed in your thistle seed feeder and feed them that way as well. House wrens. The habitat is backyards, parks, and open woods. The diet is insects. Backyard favorites are birdhouses with one and one eighth inch entrance holes. And indigo bunting. The overgrown fields, orchards, thickets, and open spaces near woods. Their diet is seeds, insects, grains, and berries. And the feeder favorites are thistle on the ground or in a tube feeder, and it does like bird baths. A scarlet tanager. The habitat is trees and shrubs along gardens and parks. The diet, it forages in trees for seeds, insects, and fruits. And the feeder favorites may come to feeders for sunflower and safflower seeds. This is a tufted titmouse. The habitat are trees and shrubs along gardens and parks. Its diet it forages in trees for seeds, insects, and fruit. And the feeder favorites are sunflower and safflower seeds. The red-headed woodpecker. Its habitat is open woodlands. It seeks out areas that are free of underbrush. Its diet is insects, berries, and nuts. And feeder favorites include cracked sunflower seeds and suet. And this is the source information that I use for getting all my materials together here. Um, this particular program was actually put together by my good friend, Diane Fruth. 
Um, she's a neighbor of, was a neighbor of mine. We lived uh, a couple houses away from each other and she has since relocated to um, Florida, but we have much of the same habitats in our yards and many of the same birds that visit. Do we have any questions? Is anybody there? Well, thank you, Nancy. This is Laura. It was a nice presentation. Do we have any questions? I don't know if I can answer them, but I would certainly be happy to try. Uh, what about holly berries? They're, they're great. I have them all over my yard. I have lots of hollies and yes, it does help attract the birds. Anything that has a bright color, they tend to come around. I don't notice them eat them that much, but they do come and get attracted to my yard with them. Okay. Okay. We have a quiet group out there today. You, you talked about pita, peanut butter. Yes. How do you, how do you put the peanut butter out? The way I do it, I take um, pine cones and I spread peanut butter all over it and then I roll it in bird seed and then hang them by strings from either um, my trees or from the um, shepherd's hooks. They actually love to come eat it that way. And how do you keep the squirrels from eating it all before the birds even find it? Well, that's a challenge because they do tend to do it. The only That's why I said it. Rather than putting it in the tree, I tend to put it from a shepherd's hook in the middle of my backyard where they can't leap from the trees and then I have a big squirrel baffle around it so they can't get up the pole. Um, when I'm putting my suet cakes out, I actually have to put two suet cakes out because I have a lot of squirrels in our wooded backyard and they will strip out a suet cake a day for me. So I try to leave one for the birds and one for the squirrels. But you have to remember squirrels can climb just about anything. So the baffle that I have on mine, I inherited one from, again, I have a lot of neighbors who've all relocated to Florida. So I have inherited a lot of things from them. The one that I inherited was a shepherd's hook that has a big baffle. I would say each, it's a circular one. So it's like a big metal plate that extends out around it. And I would say it, it extends probably close to a foot out all the way around. So they can't get up and around and it wobbles on there. So if they try to climb around it, they can't. And I literally have to put it in the middle of my very backyard so that they can't leap from any other trees to get over onto it. Well, the, the squirrels don't like thistle, so that's no problem where we have thistle feeders out. There. Right. But the biggest uh, challenge, I'll, go ahead. all the other kind of bird feeder we have, the, the biggest challenge is the squirrels. Okay, and I have two. So what I have switched to, I have two, two different types of feeders out there. I have a thistle feeder and I have the sunflower feeder. I got mine from Wild Birds Unlimited. It's a cylinder and it has like a metal cage around it with the posts on it. And when the birds get on it, they can get right into the holes and do it. A squirrel is heavy enough, it slides the metal cage down and it blocks the holes so they can't get into it. While they do not eat thistle seeds, I finally had to go to one of those for my thistle seed feeder as well because they weren't aware that that was thistle seed and they kept chewing holes and I had such big holes in my thistle seed feeders from the squirrel trying to get into it that all my seed was draining out onto the ground. And I've had very good luck with these uh, wire cage spring loaded ones. They're, they look just like the tube ones. They're not, they're not hard to work with. They're easy to take apart and clean. Um, there's a little wing nut on the bottom, or not a wing nut, like a little screw nut on the bottom that you take apart and you can slide the whole tube off, wash it all, load it back in together and it's ready to go. It's very quick and easy. I actually have one of those. Okay, and are you happy with it? Oh, very happy. I've got Good. that one um, hung from about uh, 20 foot of cable. Okay. So so a squirrel has to really be a pretty good uh, tightrope walker to get to that one. Good, and see, I actually have mine on shepherd's hooks right outside my kitchen window because I like my birds up close and personal so I can see them. So that's why I had to switch to those kind because really the squirrels can climb right up my shepherd's hook. They have no problem with that, with the one that's close to my window. But I very much enjoy watching the birds out the window. It beats TV any day. What kind of birds do you have in your backyard, the rest of you? Um, real quick, Susan, someone asked, um, I'm leery of thistle seeds because I'm afraid they will cause a proliferation of thistle plants in my backyard. Do you have that problem? Never. 
Um, I've been in my house for 32 years now. I've fed thistle seed in the same location all along and I have not had a problem with that at all. Well, to answer your question, I have um, a flock of 10 Eastern bluebirds here. Oh, how lucky eating, you are. Eating, I am, I, and they, they were attracted three years ago. I started using a heated bird bath. And I think that that was what initially brought them. And then I started, I bought a bluebird feeder and then I use dried mealworms. And right now in this cold spell, I think I'm going broke with buying food for them. <laughs> I, I understand that. I know. I just walked out with a lot of seed again. And I, I also do dried mealworms. Yeah. And, and it attracts other birds too. Yes. But honest to goodness, I've never had 10 at one time. No, I haven't either. That's why I'm amazed. It You're is doing amazing. very well. Yeah. Very exciting. Very messy. <laughs> That's, I know, but this time of the year, we'll take it. That's what I said. Oh. I, I finally went to the shelled sunflower it mixed in with the other premium seeds that I do for the cardinals and the bluebirds all because, or the blue jays, because it got to be such a mess shoveling up all the seed shells. I mean, right. I, had, I had like trash cans full by the time I was finished. What did you switch to? I, their shell, well, I get mine over at um, Wild Birds Unlimited. They, she, Carol has the street, the store right down the street here. And you can get them other places as well. They're shelled already. The sunflowers, you know, you just oh, get the, 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 shell, the shells are off of them. And then I have them mixed with other things. I buy a premium seed that really attracts the songbirds. It's heavier in um, okay. calories and things that they like, the fruits and nuts and all that. Okay. okay. I do find that I have to buy my thistle seed in uh, fairly small quantities because I have had thistle seed go rancid on me. Or, I don't even know if it goes rancid. I can't tell that there's any difference, but sometimes they just quit eating it. And if I throw that away, clean out the feeder and put it in a brand new fresh bag, then they will come back and eat again. So it must turn rancid at some point, and I'm not quite sure what it does, but I have okay. had that problem. Okay. And somebody there has great windows in their sunroom that's right there looking out on that beautiful blue sky. Oh my goodness. Obviously that was taken a couple of months ago. Okay. But, uh, but um, we end up with, uh, like the other day, we had seven deer, five stags within about 20 feet of that window. That's wonderful. Where do you live? Uh, that is actually uh, a house that we have in Lake Bluff. Okay. In Illinois. Okay. We have, we have a lot of deer that come through too. And I actually live in a subdivision that's around a golf course. And the deer have been squeezed out and they're getting more and more pro prolific because of course nobody's hunting them or anything. And we have a green belt area. Um, my neighbor the other day counted 16 of them in her yard at the same time. So oh yeah, it's been busy. We actually lived in Valparaiso very close to uh, the, uh, the Gavis. So uh, that's how we know about the Gavis. We've gone over there many times. Okay, wonderful. What do you feed the deer rather than the bird seed that they eat at the bottom of my bird feeders? <laughs> we don't, I don't feed. Do you? I was gonna say I don't, don't feed deer. We don't feed the deer anything, but uh, but they have anything that is green within about five feet or six feet of the ground they have eaten off. Uh, yeah, that, they're really a nuisance. They're they're, they're a tremendous nuisance. Last year I. Last year, I kept wondering why everybody, all of my neighbors, not in this neighborhood, but friends who had houses, had such beautiful hookahs all spring. And I kept saying, mine aren't growing, they aren't growing. And I suddenly realized, no matter how much they grew, the deer came and ate them off. Mm -hmm. So they were down, they kept nibbling them right back down to the ground. Um, they ate a lot of my hydrangeas last year. They, they can eat a number of things. It depends on how hungry they get. That's true. And I see somebody down in the lower left corner. And do you have any questions? Are you any comments about your birds? I wondered about the mealworms. What yeah. is your, what feeder do you use? Um, it's like an, I bought it. It's like an open cup bowl. It's, it's made out of metal and it's like a, a half of a sphere. And then it has a hook around it that has an arch and you can go out and hang it from the bird feeder or from the tree or whatever. So it's open and they perch on the edge of it. How Somebody big else, is it? Um, about the size of an orange. Wow. It's not, it's not that big. Wow. And I hang that out and 
put, I fill it. And when I think they're, they've used them up, then I go out and put some more in it. Mm -hmm. Somebody else, somebody else is using mealy worms. How do you do yours? I use the dried ones. Right. That's what I use. And um, I put them in a, a bluebird feeder because okay. I'm attracting the bluebirds, but the, um, a lot of other smaller birds, you know, go in there and eat them too. But it's nice because it's a, it's a round, uh, it's like a cage and the big, the blue jays and the starlings can't fit. They okay. try, <laughs> they try, um, but they can, you know, those birds will eat everything so fast. You can't keep right. up with them. So, right. Well, I got my I, mealy worms. I got my mealy worms and the feeder itself from um, Wild Birds Unlimited again from Carol. Who okay. Is, and I got, I got I'm this bluebird feeder at uh, Chesterton Feed and Garden. Okay. So you're out in the Chesterton area. I'm in Cherville. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in Velpo. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. and and lately, I've just been throwing them also just on the deck for the bigger birds that I start to feel bad for in the winter. <laughs> like I have, robins, I have the robins like them. They come and eat that and they take a bath and then they leave. <laughs> I know. We're out replacing the water in our bird feeder all the time because as I said, or not the bird feeder, yeah. the bird bath but that's heated because they do need to have... Um, be able to fluff their feathers. Right, right. It's fun to watch. I know. It is Where fun. did you get your heater for the bird bath? Oh, good question. I've had it for so many years. Mine is actually, it's built right into the, my bird bath. It's, oh. a, it's a very simple pr thing. It's like a three-legged metal stand, and then there's a plastic dish. Matter of fact, let me see if I can go back in my, let me see if I can get back through my thing. I think I saw it. I was going to say, yes, there's one just like mine, except mine's on a stand. Let me see if I can get back to it, mm -hmm. and I'll show you. It's a it's like plastic. The heater's built right into it, and then there is a uh, electric cord that just comes out of there, and we just hook it up to an extension cord, and I keep it running all the time. There it is, down in the bottom. Mine looks just like that, except it has a metal stand underneath it because I don't have okay. a uh, deck railing to attach it to. Okay. And mine looks just like that. And only because I actually do have it right on my railing of my deck. Okay, I have a I have a brick patio with a brick surround around it, and I think if I put mine on, the squirrels would probably jump on. I've had to really watch the kind of bird baths I can put out there. Um, I've given up on the concrete ones because the birds, the squirrels keep jumping on the end of it, or raccoons or something, and flipping them over and breaking them. Yes. So I had to go to either plasticky or metal type ones um, that they couldn't damage. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I didn't know if you could or not. Um, we have a heated bird bath and we've had it on this winter and we have not had any birds even attempt to use it. We have a lot of birds. We feed hmm. the birds. It's near the bird feeders. The only thing I have seen get in it is the squirrel that accidentally fell in it trying to get up on the bird feeder. Oh, oh now that's God. interesting because I see them in mine all the time. That's weird. Hmm. That's really strange, especially in the winter. How much water do you keep in it? Oh, it's um, probably an inch, inch and a half. Okay, because I was going to say, sometimes if you feed it, fill them too full, they feel like they're going to drown or something. You have to keep them, I, I was going to say, I keep mine only maybe half, halfway filled. Okay, well, ours has a, a vertical side on it. It just looks like a cake pan. Okay. But it's probably two inches deep at the very most, and we don't have that much in there. Okay. But the squirrel was very surprised when he came out wet. <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> now, mine is, mine is sloped exactly like this. I don't know if it makes a difference that you have the straighter sides, that they could be a little bit apprehensive. I don't know. They're in it all summer long. But hmm. Okay. I don't know. Good question. Anybody else have any ideas on that? No. You can find a pretty good selection of uh, heated bird baths, bird feeders, just about anything you want on Amazon. And uh, if you're a little wary about uh, going out and shopping during these COVID times, it's nice just to have it delivered to your door. What doesn't Amazon have, right? <laughs> I know. Isn't it, isn't, isn't it amazing how for years everybody relied on um, Sears Roebuck and all those places, and then we got away from all that, and all of a sudden we're back into catalog shopping and delivering again. Right. I got my um, heated 
bird bath from Wild Birds Unlimited in Valparaiso and they do curbside. So all I do is pop the trunk on my car and they put whatever my seed and everything I want right in the back of the trunk with no contact whatsoever. I just call them up and order it on the phone. That's exactly how I do it over here in Cherville too. I don't have any electricity that goes outside okay in order to do it so it would have to be something that's hmm. sun you know solar sure has anybody used a solar one i don't know and around here yeah. i don't know if we get enough sun to keep it going with this kind of temperature mm -hmm. because some days we have a lot of sun but there are other days where it's just cloudy overcast all the time so i don't know about that okay um, a place to ask, I would call like Wild Birds Unlimited or something where they're very knowledgeable and ask them. They would be a good source of um, knowing that for you. Okay, thank you. I don't know how many people we have on here. I see four people besides me. Is that it? Well, that's all the pictures I see. I Some don't people know. left, but there was about like 25, I think. Yeah, oh, right. have about 25. 20. I think it was 18 right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So well, I'm only seeing pictures for this many. That doesn't mean they're not here. I just doesn't right. Does anybody else have any comments or questions or do they want to tell us about the birds in their yards? Well, we have a lot of birds and right now, this very moment on the little lake behind our house, we have an eagle eating something. We can't oh. tell one. Oh, that's <laughs> exciting. But we were watching the eagle. Wow, that's something. And where are you located that you have Eagle? Um, in Shorewood, out in, outside of Valpo. Sure. sure, I know where Shorewood is. So Very it's a little so. lake, and it's all frozen, so the Eagle is out on the lake. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. I remember going out to Gabus Ar um, Arboretum, oh, many years ago on a snowy day, very similar to this, and going along a stream, and there was a huge stand of red twig dogwoods and then a big stand of yellow twig dogwoods and then another stand of red twig dogwoods and they were just glowing in the sunshine i'm assuming they're still there has anybody been out to see those gorgeous twigs there are a lot of red twig dogwoods there i do a lot of volunteering there there okay. are a lot of there are a lot of red twig dogwoods i just remember how stunning they were they had done and a great a giant, job keeping them pruned. and a giant coyote mm. Saw a huge coyote there one day. We have two red-tailed hawks in our backyard. Oh, that's fun. And you always know when the hawks are around because all of the other birds suddenly disappear. We've noticed that also. <laughs> You're going, wait, where are they? Oh, mm -hmm. there's the hawk. Well, and I found I have to watch. I have at the back of my house, I have a um, sliding glass door with windows above it. So my, my windows are 10 feet tall and 20 feet wide. And the birds, particularly the hawks, have learned they can start chasing a bird and the bird will think it's going to escape through that hatch because they think they can get into there. And they run into my window, hit, they drop down, stunned on the, path, on the patio underneath, and the hawk would swoop in and grab them. So I have learned that when I hear this wonk, I have to run out there and chase it away and give the bird a chance to recover, to escape. So it's amazing how we don't realize how much we affect nature, but we do even in the smallest ways. With, for example, our windows, they think they're an escape hatch. Right. Well, thank you. You are most welcome. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your stories about your birds. I enjoyed hearing that. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Saturday. Thank you. You Thank too. You. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>